Jordan Peterson has a supernatural encounter with God in a dream and with the Holy Spirit in a vision that all points to Jesus Christ as the King of Kings. But does he believe it? And what does he do with it? That's what we're showing in this video. Watch these encounters God is having with Jordan Peterson and let me know in the comments if you think these are from God. And if you haven't yet, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. It tells YouTube to tell the world about this video. Jordan Peterson, he's a psychologist, kind of psychiatrist guy for people who don't know him. And he claimed that for the majority of his life, he was an atheist. Re Semi-recently, in the last couple of years, he started to say he believes in God. He hasn't, um, from what I've seen, he hasn't fully embraced Jesus as the actual Lord and Savior yet. God's coming to him in non-biblical ways, but it's a way that I can show you as a great example to how to discern what's God or not. This is him claiming he had a dream because people ask me well how do you know if that dream is from god or not listen to this and tell me if you think this dream is from god i had a dream once and i'm speaking psychologically here not not theologically i had a dream once i was in the cemetery of an old church an old cathedral um surrounded by the graves and there were indentations in the grounds where all the graves were and all of a sudden the, the graves started to open and it was a graveyard where great people, great men of the past had been buried. And so grave opened and a, an armed king stood up. And then another grave opened and another armed king stood up. And this happened all around me. And these were very formidable figures, right? They were the great heroes of the past. And after a number of them appeared on the scene, they looked around and saw each other. And being warrior types, they immediately started to fight. And the question is, what stops the great kings of the past from fighting? And I had a revelation after the dream. I can't remember if it was part of it, but as it was part of the dream, they all bowed down to the figure of Christ. I thought, and then I woke up and I thought, what in the world does that dream mean? What in the world did that? And then I, I, I understood it. I understood that if you have 20 kings, let's say, and you took the thing that was most king-like about each of them, and then you combined it into a single figure, then you get a single figure of transcendent heroism, of transcendent good. And it's a tenant of the Jungian school of psychology, let's say, that that figure of transcendent good is symbolized by the image of Christ. And the purpose of that image is so that even the tyrannical king has someone to bend his knee to. Boom. So he has this revelation in this dream that what it means is that every knee, even the tyrannical king's knee, has to bow to Jesus Christ. Okay. This is a guy who does not believe in Jesus has this dream. Now you tell me, for those people out there who say that God doesn't use dreams anymore, doesn't speak through dreams, because this is non-biblical, you can't find this dream in the Bible. How do I know completely that this dream was from God? Because it has a biblical truth under it that from Philippians that says every knee on heaven and on earth and under the earth will bow at the name of Jesus Christ. So then I can look at this dream and discern because it has a biblical truth underneath it. I can then say this dream was not just him. This was a God-given biblical truth dream. Though you can't find it in the Bible, the truth behind the dream is very much in the Bible, which puts me in the filter. This is a God dream. Now, what if it's not a dream? What if it's something like a vision? People are saying, how do you know if a vision is from God or not? What if it, that's, what if it's just my imagination, you know, things like that. Okay. So Jordan Peterson also experienced a vision. Check this one out real quick. Very beautifully, by especially English later, later artists usually that are later than the Renaissance, but you see it in Renaissance paintings too. And you all, you also see in, in, in Renaissance paintings, especially in the earlier phase of the Renaissance, the sky opening up and God sort of peering forth through the clouds. And that's exactly what seemed to happen to me is that I had this sense. It was like a vision, although I was still in my living room and knew it, but inside the theater of my imagination, I could feel the, the sky opening up. Now it wasn't the sky. It was. A okay. Did you notice what he said there? Cause this is practical on visions. He said, I don't know what it was. It was almost like what they would describe a vision. He's like, but it was like I was in the theater of my imagination. In other videos, I encourage you to go to watch them. I talk about how visions are actually something you can see in your imagination. That God can use your imagination to paint a picture like a movie theater, cast it upon your imagination to show you something. Now the question is though, well, if I imagined it, is it me or is it God? Well, keep watching and you tell me, let me know if you think this is from God or not. I would say the only way I can really think about it is it was something like another dimension. 
And then I could feel this force descend upon me, which I think was something that, you know, would have been considered classically something like the Holy Ghost, I suppose. It filled me with this intense sense of, 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 of paradisal, uh, paradisal, I don't know how to say it. Uh, well, it was like being in heaven for some, some, some brief period of time, and I could feel myself transformed, transmuted as a consequence of this experience. And, and it was as if I was in the presence of something that was living, you know, and I, I suppose that was an experience of God, if you want to put it that way. Um, that's certainly what it seemed like. And, and I felt that I could live that way. I could live transfigured like that permanently if I desired it. And I thought, my God, I wouldn't be able to walk down the street in this sort of elevated state, let's say. I, I don't know how I would act. I don't know how I would interact with people. I don't know how people would interact with me. I just don't think that I could do it. And then I felt that whatever had descended, it seemed that as if it was sorrowful and it, and it, and it departed from me slowly. And um, Is that crazy? So there's a Bible verse here in Ephesians 4.30. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you are sealed for the day of redemption. So what happened is he says that he had this realization in this imagination moment. He had this realization of this force, this Holy Ghost like presence of a living thing like that was like heaven come upon him. And it said that you can he can surrender to this or not. And he had all these worries flood in that said, well, well how could I live with this? I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could surrender to this. I don't, I don't know if I and as he's starting to say no, he's rejecting it. He said it felt as though this presence of the Holy Spirit was sorrowful. It was like it was grieving his heart. It's because he was kind of saying no. He was rejecting it in this moment. And he says, uh, and he goes on to say it wasn't angry, but it was it was sad. He could tell it was sad that Jordan was rejecting it. With no, like with no punitive intent, and, and I wouldn't say with any dissatisfaction. It was as if a gift had been offered that I wasn't in no position to receive. And uh... So it says it's like a gift was offered to him. He was the gift of salvation. And he said, but I wasn't, I wasn't in a place to receive it. I went, I talked to my wife soon afterwards. I shook for about physically for about half an hour after that uh, experience. Like, like I was shaking, you know, like, like, like you shake after a car accident. If you've ever been in a car accident and my pupils were completely dilated. And I had a couple of experiences like that, like echoes of it a couple of times after that. And so anyways, that was a very, very powerful experience. I've certainly. So he even then goes to say that his body reacted, his eyes dilated. He said he was shaking and trembling, right? People, once again, they say, uh, how do you discern if trembling is from God or feeling or sensing things? Look at Jordan Peterson right here. This is a real encounter by a man who's not a Christian. And all of it was pointing to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus. Okay, why did I show all that? Well, a couple of reasons. One is... Uh, you got to pray for, for Jordan Peterson, pray for our celebrities, pray for our people with platforms, uh, pray that they encounter God and that they publicly share it so that the world can realize that Jesus is real and Jesus is the king that every knee bows to. Let me know if you know of any other celebrities or people like that uh, that are encountering God. I want to know about it so we can testify and, and, and tell people about it, okay? This was a clip from a full in-depth teaching I did on discernment. How do you know if you're hearing God's voice, Satan's voice, or your own voice? It's hard to discern. If you want to watch that, click right over here to get the full teaching on that. And if you want to know how God can still speak to you today, click on this one right over here. We're going to teach on that subject.